invite you to turn within with me to the Holy Spirit and let him take control this morning of this service. So I invite you to close your eyes for a moment if you wish. Just relax as we invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, we ask you this morning to just wash us this morning. Cleanse us and heal us, dear God. Father, we ask you that we receive your holy baptism this morning, dear Father. Surround us with your love and with your light. And Father God, we ask this morning for peace peace to flow through this church and through the universe because Lord you have given us the power to speak peace and that peace if we believe will radiate through the universe so this morning father in Jesus name I speak the word to the universe peace be still be still and know that God in the midst is mighty to heal anything and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I invite you to take your hymnals and please stand for the singing of hymn 157, Holy Spirit, Source of Gladness. Please be seated. Our daily word today is faith. And I'll ask Lucille to read our daily word. Good morning. Faith. Faith heals prospers, blesses, and sustains me. Sometimes I wish I had a way of looking into the future and knowing what to expect. But even though I cannot know how the future might unfold, I can still be prepared for it through the power of my faith. Having faith means I have unwavering fidelity to spiritual truth. My faith is my anchor, keeping me steady 
during shifting worldly circumstances and focused not on the things of the world, but on the power of spirit. My faith keeps me steadfast in the midst of uncertainty, inventive when meant met with stagnation, and adaptable when faced with challenging circumstances. I turn my attention to God and feel my soul illumined by my belief that everything is working for good. I align with this truth and go forth blessed by my faith. And from 2 Corinthians 5 to 7, we have, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Blessings. Thank you, Lucille. The word this morning is faith. What a powerful word. We all know what that is because we have been tested in some way or the other. In Matthew 9, 29, it says, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. Our daily word affirmation today states, faith heals, prospers, blesses, and sustains me. And our daily word also ad advises us to align with this truth and go forth blessed by faith. In Matthew 9, 27, we are told, that two men followed Christ, saying, Son of David, have mercy upon, me, upon us. And when Jesus had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I can do this? And they said, Yes, Lord. And the blind men were healed according to their faith. I would want to believe that the healing came not only by the belief, but by Christ's power, the power of God. Jesus said, our faith is something we can all work on. Faith can grow and develop. This means my faith and your faith is about where we are going and growing. I was reading yesterday morning one of my um, daily pr prayer was explaining about the eagle, how they, teach the, how they teach the young ones to fly. The eagle knows exactly what time the young ones would be ready. And when they are ready, they are from whatever high cliff they are, the mother gently pushes them off and they find out they can fly. Because at that moment, they either fly or they die. But when they found out they had those little things they called wings, they lifted them up and they was happy to know that they can fly. Now God knows us the same way. He, te he trains us. He, the faith, he teaches us that our faith grows. You have the little things happen and the next time the test comes, it's a little harder and it's a little harder, but the faith is growing. And he knows when he is ready to use us. If God has to use you, there's no way you can get away from it. When God was ready to use Abraham, he didn't ask him, are you ready? Do you want to go? Uh-uh. He said, you are going. And that's it. Because he knows where Abraham's faith was in God. He knew that Abraham knew God. And he knew that whatever he send him to do. He know he was not alone. God is always with us. Wherever he send us, whatever we have to do, he promised, I would never leave you. I would never forsake you. So this morning, just believe our faith is continuing to grow. If you're willing, God will help you. Jesus said, our faith is something we can all work on and develop. This means by faith, and your faith, where we are going and where we are going. Faith opens the door to divine blessing. It, lock, it locks the door. It lock, lock closes the door. Faith opens the door. Lack closes the door. Scripture tells us that Jesus could do few mighty works in Nazareth due to the people's lack of faith. 
Why you think he didn't have faith there? Because that was his hometown. They couldn't believe that a little carpenter's son could do such great works. And I'm sure sometime in life, I know it happened to me. People put you in a certain category that because of who you are and where you come from, you cannot do certain things. But yes, by the grace of God, you can do it if you're willing. The point here is that the two blind men, were, I, eyes were open. Jesus removed the two blind men blindness and they now can see and understand what was once closed to them. Thus, the opening of the eyes also suggests spiritual understanding. I remember when I first started, I left the Episcopal Church and I was invited to Unity Church. And when I left the Episcopal Church, I did have a Bible in the house, but I never read it. And I never knew where God was. I just knew there was a God, but I just didn't know where he was. At Unity, my eyes became open and open to the truth. And it's like I was ready for it. And I grabbed it and I ran with it. Because at that time, I grew. God knows I was ready. So remove me from that place to another place where my eyes will open and I can see and I can hear the truth. Many of us may not grasp the value of the meaning of scriptures, but Christ can open our eyes to enable us to understand his word just as he did for the disciples after the resurrection. David in Psalm 119, 18 says, Open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things of the law. So today, shall something occur in your life to cause you grief and unhappiness? Meet it with faith. Last week, I was having a problem with dizziness. I called up my doctor and she sent me for this test. I said, well, it's all right if you send me for the test, but I want to feel good now. Give me something just to help me until I go for the test. Because I'm going for the test knowing that it is well. And it doesn't matter what they say. I'm holding to the truth. Because it is only an appearance. It is not of God. And if I really and truly hold on to that truth, my healing would come. But I can't waver. Not one minute I say, well, it is, it is healed. And the next minute I say, but oh, I can't do that. I have to hold to the truth. What's the truth? God promised my, my healing. And if he promised me, he will give it to me. And I keep saying, I am healed. I am healed. Praise God, I am healed. Because I know I am healed, even if I don't feel that way. Meet it with your faith, faith that God is with you. The faith that God is present everywhere. God is not here and there. he's everywhere. And I always use the affirmation, God in the midst of it is mighty to heal. No matter what you're going through, God is there. And if God is there, good is there. So this morning, just let's anchor our thought on faith. Stand firm on your faith. You know what the, if you know what the truth is, stand on it. Stand on God's promises. He promised, Joe, and I always say it whenever I get in my car, I say, God, you promised me you would never leave me. I'm making, I'm traveling to so-and-so. I thank you for staying close to me. And I can actually feel him close to me because that's what he said. Joe and I would, and I always, Hear him calling my name. Joan, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. What more do I want? I just have to believe what he says so, and it will be so. So this morning, I invite you to take your bulletin and affirm with me. Faith heals, prospers, blessings, and sustain me. Let's repeat that. Faith heals prospers, blesses, and sustains me. I invite you to remain seated as we sing our 
affirming him 159. Remain seated. Amen. I invite you to turn within with me as we go into prayer. Just make this time just be a special time where you release everything and turn within to God. Ask the Holy Spirit this morning to just flow. Flow, Spirit, flow through the sanctuary this morning. Flow through the ones on Zoom this morning. Wash out whatever is in us that is not of you, Father. Cleanse us this morning and heal us this morning, Lord. Father, increase our faith this morning. Help us as we continue on this journey, dear God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. In John 14, 26, Jesus says, But the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in your name, will teach you all things. 
Father God, this morning we are open and receptive to your will and to your way. Asking you to teach us, Father. Teach us more about you, dear God. Come, Holy Spirit, Father God. Fill us with your truth. Fill us with your understanding. Let your will be done in our lives right now, dear Father. Father God, we just want to thank you. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for leading us. We ask this morning that the Holy Spirit will be done in and through us. We ask you to stir our faith this morning, dear God. Stir our faith like the, eag the, the, eagles, the eagles this morning, dear Father. That you know when it's time, dear God, to push us off that cliff. And we can fly and sway like the eagles. We were meant, we were born to be free. And we claim our freedom this morning in the name of Jesus. Father God, we just want to ask you this morning to forgive us. Forgive us when we are tempted to put other things in front of you, dear God. You are our everything. And this morning, dear God, we thank you. As we ask you and we give you thanks for washing us and cleansing us this morning and making us whole, dear Father God. You promise, dear Father, you are going to heal. You promise that we should cast all our cares upon you for your care. This morning we are casting our cares upon you, knowing that you care. We ask you this morning, dear God, just walk with us and talk with us through this journey of life. And we ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus. And so it is. It cannot be otherwise. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to return to the here and now. Open your hymnals and please stand as we sing the affirming hymn. 160, 160. Please stand.
This is a time in the service when we greet each other and we let everyone know this morning, you have the faith. You have the faith. And now I'll turn it over to Janie Marie. Man of God, she's doing the service today. Great morning. Thank you, Lucille, for reading the daily word. You know, when she read it, I could feel the faith growing. You know, and when Joan platforms, thank you, Joan. There's always something she says, a couple of words that kind of stick with you. And today was the no wavering. And no wavering in faith is so powerful. First Corinthians. 16:13 says be alert stand firm in the faith act like men be strong today we are alive awake alert and enthusiastic about life today we stand firm on faith today we are strong and we send this strength to Reverend Charles and we see him in the light of perfect health. We see him whole, perfect, and complete. I thank you for coming, for sharing your love, your energy, all of you in the sanctuary. I thank you for all of you joining us on Zoom. Philippians talks about energy your energy. Philippians 2.13 says that energy is God's energy, an energy deep within you. So let us embrace this energy and just take a minute and take some time to quiet our mind and quiet our body for the loving spirit moves and flows here and now. Inhale and feel the presence of the divine spirit. We pray through envisioning and acknowledging that every thought is bathed in divine love. This is the harmoni harmonizing power. Every thought brings on the presence and the power of divine order. Our thoughts transform in the presence of this love. For we are able to see a way where there was no way. We are able to hold and bring forth love and generosity. And we are able to openly give and receive our blessings. And so it is. Amen. Let us now recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.
And that is what faith is. It is just believing. Believing and knowing that divine love always has met and always will meet every human need. Father, Mother, God, we take this time, this moment to acknowledge and appreciate the one power and the one presence in our lives. This divine love from whom all blessings flow. As we dwell in this awareness, we embrace the love. We see that our lives are the one power and the one presence in expression. And this love is present daily, daily in our comings, daily in our going. As we acknowledge and appreciate the presence of the divine order in every circumstance, every relationship and experience, we are filled with gratitude. We express this gratitude for each blessing we receive. Father, we bask in the awareness that our blessings come from the creative power within us. We recognize that as children of the Heavenly Father, it is our right to be blessed by this power. This power that guides and leads and fulfills all the desires our desires of good health, happiness, love, success, and prosperity. We joyfully rest in the knowledge that this powerful presence is our force for good. And as we see the prayer chest coming forward, we take time and we give energy to these prayer requests. God is and therefore we are divine. We are divine life. We are whole in body, mind, and spirit. We are aware of the flow of life throughout our body. For as our heart beats in perfect rhythm, it is in line with the perfect pulse of our life. Every cell in our body is receptive and responsive to the ever renewing power of divine love. We know that all there is is God and we are surrounded by the flow of the divine spirit. Father, we release this positive energy into the atmosphere, to the divine order that is already working, already working and making it so. We let go of concerns. We let go of worry, knowing that they are already taken care of. And so it is. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Chris. It is a great day. And for those of you that were with us last Sunday, it was a great day at the gala. And I just want to, can we just give a little applause to the dean and her team? Because they really put it together. It was so good to see people just enjoy and it's people they hadn't seen in a while and hug and, and, and smile and laugh and it was joyous. It really was joyous. So as I said, today is a great day. And today we're going to be discussing God's kingdom. So what is God's kingdom? God's kingdom is a state of consciousness. God's kingdom is the orderly working and adjustments 
of divine idea in man's mind and body. So as I was preparing the lesson, I had a conversation with my daughter. And my daughter went to Unity Sunday School, and you'll see why I put that fact in, in a minute. But as I was in, having a conversation with her, and my daughter likes to acquire information and then bring it to my awareness as to whether or not I know it. So, so as we were having this conversation, it rekindled some information that she had given me before. So in John 19, 28, it says, Jesus declares, I thirst. Jesus said, I thirst, and he was on the, on the cross, and it actually was one of his last words. And Jesus was given vinegar-soaked sponge. Now when we hear this, giving a man vinegar to drink makes us feel a little bad. But you see, God's kingdom, a higher consciousness, the orderly working, was present. And this is the fact my daughter brought to me. What Jesus actually was given was the ancient Roman equivalent to our Gatorade. Roman soldiers were given Pasca, this drink as part of their rations, just enough for the day. And it was made by mixing vinegar, water, and wine, along with some herbs and salt. And it was believed that due to the high acidity in the vinegar and the wine, all the bacteria in the water would be killed, making it safer to drink. And it was often consumed by Roman soldiers after a heavy battle so that they could replenish their energy and recover quickly. So you see, God's kingdom was really there. In that group of soldiers was at least one, one of them that thought to give his rations, his stipend, what he needed to survive to Jesus. God's kingdom was there. That soldier adjusted his awareness of his divine ideas in his mind and brought about God's kingdom. You see, God's kingdom is here and it's present in our lives, and we have to be able to recognize it, engage it, and restore it. So before we engage and restore God's kingdom, we need to make sure we understand and know what it is. In order to partake in the glory of God's kingdom, we have to reside within it. There has to be no separation or as Joan said, no wavering from God's kingdom and our lives. God's kingdom, the orderly working and adjustments of divine ideas in man's mind and body. A state of consciousness where the soul and the body are in harmony with divine mind. So in order to dwell in this state of consciousness, we have to be aware of the divine ideas and use them appropriately. So before I move on, let me speak a minute about the 12 fundamental divine ideas. Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, had the spiritual insight to use the 12 disciples as exemplars. Thus, he linked them to, divine, to the divine ideas and to the divine spiritual powers. And we know them, wisdom, love, strength, faith, imagination, order, understanding, will, power, zeal, release, and life. These ideas make an umbrella for all other ideas. So we engage God's kingdom when we paint a picture, when we paint our life. We focus on them, we understand them, we cultivate them. But what do we do when we're not dwelling in this higher consciousness, in this state? We renew our mind. 
Romans 12, 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I like the way Charles Fillmore states it, and he says, our objective should not be to leave earth, but rather transform earth into the kingdom envisioned by Jesus. So how do we renew our minds? How do we restore God's kingdom in our lives? By changing the way we think. You see, we need to train our brain to recognize false beliefs. Train your brain to recognize negative thoughts. Then call out those negative thoughts or lies and replace them with truth. Adjust your thinking. Charles Fillmore believed and taught that the most effective way to do this is through the use of denials and affirmations. And we know that denials eliminate anything from consciousness that is not of a divine idea. And of course, affirmations of truth establish the harmony of divine ideas. Jesus used it this way, and he used the analogy of a seed to describe the kingdom, emphasizing that the potential within each of us is just like that mustard seed. It needs to be nurtured in the right environment. The word of truth, like a seed, contains unexpressed capabilities, unexpressed capacities. And when nurtured with the divine ideas, blossom and manifest good. The key to restoring God's kingdom lies in consistently establishing a consciousness of truth and adjusting our outer lives to align with this truth. And in doing so, we bring forth that divine potential within us and we manifest God's kingdom in our lives. So, restore God's kingdom. The formula is simple. Deny correctly, correctly deny by letting go of anything in consciousness that seeks to negate a divine idea. Affirm correctly by stating your beliefs and your willingness to be in consciousness. So we know what God's kingdom is, and we know how to restore it. But believe it or not, we are already experiencing God's kingdom. Our human body is already experiencing God's kingdom. It already renews itself. Some of the most vital cells in the body renew themselves. Red blood cells, for instance, live only a few weeks and are continually being replaced by a source from the bone marrow. Your skin renews itself. The epidermis constantly makes new cells in its lower level, layers. And over a course of around four weeks, these cells make their way to the surface, become hard, and replace any shedding or dead cells. You see, the important point to remember is that you are a far more miraculous person than you even realize. Your divine mind sets the stage for all of your good. So yes, by all means, think new. Think new thoughts that are worthy of those new cells being born in you. Because while there is automatic renewal of the cells in the body, there is not automatic renewal of thoughts in your mind. You have to do it yourself. You see, it's important that we renew our mind. It's important that we experience God's kingdom because the society's ability to renew itself hinges on the individual. 
young countries, young businesses, humans, they all have a several, several key commonalities, right? They're flexible, they're eager, they're open, they're unafraid, they're curious, they're willing to take risks, right? And these conditions will lead to success. But however, as time passes, so too comes complacency and apathy and rigidity and motivation can plummet. And this is the junction where life stagnates. So today, I charge you. I charge you to keep your life full throttle. Keep your life full throttle by living in a state of consciousness where your soul, your body, and your mind are in perfect harmony with the divine mind. I charge you to keep your life full throttle by painting the life you want, by focusing on understanding and cultivating the 12 spiritual powers. Keep your life full throttle by restoring God's kingdom, by changing the way in which you think and creating a better life. Keep your life full throttle by adjusting your thoughts, eliminate from consciousness all in harmonious ideas. Keep your life full throttle by experiencing the kingdom of God, thinking new thoughts every day. In closing, I'd like to uh, quote a Chinese philosopher, Lao Tzu. And he says, he who knows others is wise. He who knows himself is enlightened. And so it is. Thank you. So, as we live and experience God's kingdom, let us open our hymnals to page 162. I dare believe that God is good.
right. I dare believe that God is good. Simple. All right. So it's now to we've come to the time where we share our love and we make room for more blessings for an open hand receives. Please hold your love offering to your heart and let us affirm the truth of abundance. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Here are the announcements. The book room will be open on the first and third Sundays of each month. On Saturday, November the 18th, at 10 a.m. on Zoom, The Twelve Powers of Man by Charles Fillmore will be discussed. Read chapter nine, the title Understanding, and you have your ID and passcode printed on the bulletin. On Sunday, November the 19th is Fellowship Sunday, and you are encouraged to bring a friend. On Thursday, November the 23rd at 10 a.m. is our Zoom Thanksgiving service, and the ID and passcode is also printed on the bulletin. On Thursday, November the 30th, 2023 at 11 a.m., the book discussion group selection is Mad Honey by Jody Pickles and Jennifer Finney Boylan. All are welcome, and the ID and passcode are printed on the bulletin. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, is there anyone here for the first time? But I do, I thank you for coming and sharing your energy and sharing in God's kingdom with us. Let us stand and bless these gifts and love offerings as we prepare to close out our service. Three, we could, let's, we, well, we, we don't need the piano, we can sing it, yes? Okay. All right, let's sing it. To you, these giver of gifts, we say thank you. Thank you for sharing your love for all that you give to this ministry was built and sustained. Come on, Ben. We say thank you, God, for we know that all our good comes from the source. And so it is. Amen. Did you want to say something? Uh, uh, well, normally when you come out, it's because you want to say something. <laughs> so. Well, I need to say thank you to everybody for bringing your, your talents, your joy, your life to the gala at the Uncle John Mary Bell Boat House. So, well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let us now join in the peace song.
The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance and light upon us and give us peace this day, this night, and forevermore. Go in love, live in peace, and be in service to all mankind. Amen. Amen. Let us affirm the truth of our being. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. And the presence of God watches over us. For I am presence. For wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. I am divine. God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. 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 So remember this week, paint your life by focusing on divine ideas. Restore your kingdom of God by adjusting your thinking. And as you leave this building, residing in God's kingdom, bless another member of God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Please join us for prayer circle. Have a blessed week, everyone. You too. Thank yeah, you, Marie. Have a blessed <laughs>